Okay, welcome to MEC 516, BME 516, Fluid Mechanics 1. Before I get into the deeper technical content of the course, I thought I'd start by talking about some of the common engineering applications for fluid mechanics. Hopefully this will give you some idea of why it is important to learn fluid mechanics. Maybe it'll inspire you and pique your interest in this topic which I think is fundamentally uh, pretty interesting. A very common application, especially for mechanical engineers, is heating, ventilating, and air conditioning, uh, HVAC. Fluid mechanics considerations are central to the design of furnaces, air conditioners, heat pumps, and uh, even fans and ducting systems. In fact, there's a fourth year course for mechanical engineers in HVAC. I believe it's an optional course. All buildings require some sort of HVAC system and large buildings would have very complicated heating, ventilating, and air conditioning systems. Uh, so there's a lot of employment, especially for mechanical engineers in this area. Industrial pump and piping systems also involve fluid mechanics principles. So, for example, here you might be selecting a pump in order to get the desired amount of flow rate, or you might be sizing the piping so you don't have too much pressure drop along the pipe. We'll get into some of these issues in detail in this course. There are also a wide range of fluid mechanics problems in the transportation sector. Uh, of course, with aircraft, you're concerned with the aerodynamics of the flow over the wing uh, that keeps the aircraft in the air. There's also flow through the turbine engines that provides the thrust to keep the uh, aircraft aloft. Aerodynamic drag, for example, is important in designing cars, especially sports cars. And on boats, uh, wave drag would also be an important consideration in terms of how much power it takes to drive the boat through the water. These are all key uh, fluid mechanics considerations. Fluid mechanics is also uh, central to the design of electric power systems. Here we're talking about coal power plants, natural gas power plants, and nuclear reactors. There is fluid flow in boilers, in condensers, and uh, in the nuclear reactors themselves. A common everyday application is the electronic cooling of the computer that you're uh, watching this presentation on at the moment. Uh, this is usually done with a fan blowing air over a heat sink of some sort. Uh, and nowadays this can be analyzed using a technique called computational fluid dynamics, which I'll talk about a bit in this course. Because of concerns over climate change and other environmental issues, there's a growing interest in renewable energy. It's certainly a growing field. And fluid mechanics is central to the design of many of these renewable energy systems, systems like solar thermal collectors, in other words, hot water solar collectors. It's central to the design of, of course, the blades of turbines, which is all about the aerodynamics. Fluid mechanics is also important for things like the design of hydroelectric power plants. And it's also important for uh, things like geothermal systems. Fluid mechanics also arises in many uh, biomedical applications. So the study of fluid mechanics is necessary in order to understand flow in the cardiovascular system. Here, of course, the two main fluids that we're talking about are blood and air. And it turns out that blood is a rather unusual fluid. And I will talk about this later in the course. Also, the heart is a biological pump. One of the more exciting aspects of learning fluid mechanics, I think, is that it's a gateway to learning computational fluid dynamics, which is a more advanced topic. Uh, 
Computational fluid dynamics is the numerical solution of the equations of fluid flow, the so-called Navier-Stokes equations, which we will talk about in this course. And nowadays, most mechanical designs involving fluid mechanics are done using CFD. Let me start this little video here. This is a solution of fluid flow over a small vehicle. And of course, the idea here would be to predict the flow patterns and the aerodynamic drag with, with, of course, an eye to minimizing the aerodynamic drag on the vehicle. And there are some really nice commercial solvers out there, commercial software for engineering design involving CFD. One's called Comsol. Another one is ANSYS Fluent. But CFD goes quite a bit beyond mechanical design. Nowadays, your daily weather prediction is really made using computational fluid dynamics. Here we're solving the complex flows in the atmosphere. It's also been used extensively for climate modeling by NASA. And here in this image is showing the what's called the global circulation of the atmosphere. And it's a prediction by NASA as part of their efforts to predict the effects of climate change. CFD also comes up in movies and advertising. It's called computer-generated imagery, and you've undoubtedly seen this in movies by Pixar and Industrial Light and Magic. So instead of nowadays, instead of building physical models, you actually build a numerical model and solve the equations of fluid flow. And this is just a little example here, and you can see that you know this is completely virtual, but it's uh, surprisingly convincing. To conclude this general introduction, I thought I'd talk a bit about how this course fits into the context of the engineering curriculum. This is a first course in fluid mechanics, and for mechanical engineers, they're going to get MEC 616, a second course in fluid mechanics next term, which has a significant design component. Now for mechanical engineers, MEC 516 and MEC 616 are prerequisites for a range of other courses. These are heat transfer, thermal systems design, environmental control in buildings, which is HVAC, as I discussed earlier. There's also thermal power generation, which I also mentioned earlier as having strong fluid mechanics applications. And finally, there's combustion engineering. Fluid mechanics is also a useful background for the capstone design course, since many of the capstone design courses will involve elements of fluid mechanics. Now for the biomedical engineers, uh, MEC 516, this course, or BME 516, is a prerequisite for BME 700, the capstone design course. I think you'll also find it useful for several other courses, including biomedical instrumentation, design of biomems, and biomedical systems modeling. Now for the industrial engineers, there are no subsequent courses that require MEC 516, but this is really uh, more background in basic physics. It also provides you a bit more background. It'll help you understand and talk the same language as other engineers, especially mechanical engineers. And if you go on to graduate studies, there are uh, graduate courses in fluid mechanics at Ryerson. That's ME8102, Advanced Fluid Mechanics. So that's a quick introduction to some of the common applications of fluid mechanics. I've tried to show how you may end up using this course in your engineering career, as well as how it fits into your engineering curriculum. I thought I'd end with this slide just for a bit of fun. So far, we've been talking about industrial applications, but we spend our lives immersed in a fluid. Of course, that fluid is air, and we're surrounded by bodies of water. And so it's not perhaps surprising that fluid mechanics is encountered in many of our recreational activities. You know, maybe regular sailing or kite sailing, both of these involve managing the aerodynamics in both air and water. Of course, surfing would involve fluid mechanics principles and scuba diving. 
Of course, in scuba diving, you're actually swimming in the liquid, but there are technical elements as well, such as buoyancy control. We're going to talk about buoyancy in this course. And if you're a scuba diver, when you go deeper, the pressure increases greatly with depth. It's about one atmosphere for every 10 meters. We're going to talk about the pressure variation in liquids in the hydrostatic section of this course. And there's skydiving. This is a picture of myself and a fellow graduate student in free fall over Grand Bend, Ontario, uh, quite a number of years ago. I'm on the right. Uh, of course, when you jump out of an aircraft, you accelerate toward the ground, but the intense wind picks up to the point where the drag on your body equals your weight, and then you uh, fall at constant velocity, a velocity called terminal velocity. Uh, that's about 200 kilometers an hour, and you can go up and down relative to your partner in free fall uh, by adjusting the position and shape of your body. What you're actually adjusting is your drag coefficient, and we're going to talk about aerodynamic drag uh, in this course as well. And so I'll stop there. Uh, the next video gets into the technical content of the course. So that completes this presentation.